Hi everyone, uh, this is Andrew Nomins and we're here today to talk about virtual reality and how to take our MicroStation models into the Unity game engine and then from there to the HTC Vive virtual reality headset. Um, this will be the first of a series of videos which are intended to be a companion to a written tutorial that I posted on Bentley's MicroStation visualization forum. Uh, before I dive into the high-tech stuff, I thought it'd be cute to look at some of the low-tech stuff. And this is the Viewmaster from my childhood. Um, it came with a series of discs which contained seven stereoscopic images, which you would then insert in through the top of the device and then pull this lever down to uh, transition from one image to the next. Um, the sense of presence and and the stereoscopic effect that you got with this, and particularly for me as a child, I, I, I was just blown away by it. Um, and I think this is what spurred me on or, or gave me my interest in 3D and virtual reality as an adult. Um, to geek out just a little bit, my favorite series of discs was this one, um, Space 1999 from the 1970s. Uh, as a child, being able to look at these stereoscopic images and experience these fantastical worlds in 3D and, and have that sense of presence was, was just amazing. I loved it. But that's all nostalgia and in the past. In the present we have the HTC Vive headset. Uh, we also have the Oculus Rift but this is the one that I've purchased and am using. Uh, this was developed by a company called Valve and uh, I guess manufactured and distributed by HTC. Now Valve were initially famous for their Half-Life series of games and then their Portal series of games. Now the Portal games are, are fantastic. I recommend that you, you install them, buy them, play them. They're, they're just great. You'll love them. Um, the other thing that Valve are famous for is their game distribution platform called Steam. Now they distribute more than just games nowadays. They, they do software as well. But um, it's a very popular platform with, uh, as you can see here, 65 million players. And I think at any one time there might be 7 to 11 million active users. Um, the other th the area that Valve have branched into is hardware. And famously, they released last year this uh, hand controller, which has these touch-sensitive pads. Uh, now, it turns out that those same touch-sensitive pads were used on the Vive hand controllers. Um, but along with the game controller, they also have this thing called a Steam Link, I think, which connects your gaming PC to the television in your lounge room. They also have their own uh, gaming platform uh, called the Steam Machine, and this is based on Linux. Uh, in fact, I think a version of Debian. Um, I'd love to see this thing succeed, if, if only for the sake of Linux. Um, but they're really not advertising it much uh, or promoting it. Now, the other area of research that Valve have been involved in is obviously the virtual reality headsets. And I think they even started research on this before uh, Oculus was a thing. Um, and, and their intention was never really to even release this as a commercial product. They were just doing research to know how to target their games in the future. Uh, but then Facebook came along and bought out Oculus and things changed and, and Valve decided to make their research project a commercial product. And that's how we have the HTC Vive. Uh, as you can see here, the Vive is made up of a few components. There's the headset and there's two uh, infrared base stations which are used for motion tracking. And there are two motion tracked hand controllers. Now, as it turns out, having motion tracked hand controllers is very important for the sense of presence in virtual reality. And um, so we'll be using these hand controllers in our uh, MicroStation project or in our Unity project. And we'll be using this big button up here to teleport around our scene. Um, so we'll be using this hardware. We'll be using Valve software. So Valve will um, feature in you know, code from Valve will, will be in our uh, Unity project. And so, um, as I mentioned already, Unity will be the platform that we'll develop our virtual reality project in. There's also Unreal and, and other game engines that you can use 
as well. But, um, and, and I haven't really had much experience with Unreal, but the little experience I have had uh, led me to think that Unity is much more suited to my preferred workflow. I, it just feels simpler and straightforward, and it seems to work better with uh, MicroStation and, and the CAD files that we generate. So uh, Unity has a few, few flavors, but really the only one that we want uh, is the free personal edition. It does everything that we want. So that's the one that we want to install. The latest stable version of Unity is version 5.3, um, but that's not the one that we want. We actually want the latest beta version, which is version 5.4. Um, 5.4 has got a whole lot of optimization for um, stereoscopic 3D rendering. So um, go to this website and install uh, Unity version 5.4. And as you can see here, this is uh, release candidate 2. Um, the Unity game engine has got uh, a, a, quite a large user group. I think there's something on the order of three and a half million registered Unity developers um, with maybe like a million uh, active users per month. Um, but along with all those users is a very vibrant asset store where you can purchase all sorts of things or download a whole lot of free uh, plugins. Um, so as an example, here is a really cool plugin called Speedtree, and you can find that in the Unity store in 3D models, uh, vegetation, Speedtree. And these are great. They, they come in multiple levels of detail. They, um, they will respond to wind in your scene so that the foliage will sway in the, in the breeze and the branches will, will sway in the breeze. Um, and they look fantastic and, and they're relatively low polygon models. So I definitely recommend these. Um, and they're just a, an example of the sort of thing you can get from the asset store. Um, now, we will be using the asset store for a few plugins that, that we, we definitely have to have. Um, so the two that the two plugins that we'll be getting from the asset store are the Steam VR plugin, which is from Valve, and also the Lab Renderer, which is also from Valve. Um, the Steam VR plugin uh, forms the foundational code to get uh, Unity to talk to the, the your hardware, so your HTC Vive hardware, um, and that's all it does. You still will need to to do a certain amount of coding to tell your game or your environment how the hand controller should look, how the teleport mechanism will work, how it will look, how your head tracking will work, all that sort of stuff. Now, I'm not a developer and neither are you guys probably. Um, so luckily we have this third party developer called the Stone Fox who has made available a whole bunch of scripts which do exactly what I was just talking about, that they set up your your game environment to, to teleport, to um, move around, to do all, all that you need to do. But to start off with, we will need the SteamVR plugin from Valve and we'll install that from within our Unity project. Um, the second plugin that we'll need is the Lab Renderer from Valve. And this is, this is not required, but it is definitely desired. It's, it's an optimized renderer that Valve have developed for stereoscopic VR rendering. Um, it does a much better anti-aliasing. It does um, a dynamic load balancing so that it guarantees a constant 90 frame per second uh, render rate, uh, which turns out to be quite important to help stop motion sickness. Um, it also does two-sided rendering, which turns out to be quite handy as well. Uh, Unity is standard shader, only does single-sided rendering. Um, uh, so with two-sided rendering, you can tell the lab renderer to uh, render leaves on trees, you know, on both sides of, of the polygon. Or um, if you have, uh, let's say, a chain link fence, um, so that you can see the texture on both sides of the polygon. Whereas with the single-sided renderer, when you move to move to the back side of a, of a piece of geometry, that geometry then becomes invisible. So double-sided rendering is a nice feature that the lab renderer does as well. Um, the third plugin that we'll need is the SteamVR Unity Toolkit, and this is the one that that developer has made available to everybody for free. Um, 
Now here you can see it's, it's listed here in the asset store as a plugin that you can install, but we won't actually be installing this toolkit from the Steam via, from the asset store. Um, and in fact, the developer even down here suggests that you go to the GitHub page um, to download the latest version of the toolkit. Now, GitHub is a software distribution system for open source software. And I mean, it does much, much more than that. But basically, you can come to the GitHub page for, for this toolkit and go to the download button and then download that to your hard disk. Um, once you've downloaded it, we'll, we'll just do a little bit of um, processing to, to make it ready for when we need it in our Unity project. Uh, before I show you how I process this file, um, the developer, the Stone Fox, has got his own YouTube channel where he's uploaded a whole bunch of uh, videos which describe how each of his little scripts work. Um, so definitely take a look at those. But I think for the most part, if you follow my instructions, you should get a project that works um, and you won't need to refer to these videos. Uh, the other thing about these videos is they were created um, months ago and there's been a lot of development work on the toolkit since then and some of the videos have now become obsolete. So um, you should be able to get by with the instructions that I've given you in the written tutorial. Uh, so, but, but nevertheless, have a look at this guy's YouTube channel. So I've downloaded the, um, the zip file. And so the workflow to process the zip file is pretty much this. Um, here you can see my MicroStation folder, or my MicroStation project, and, and there's my, um, uh, my geometry file. Uh, and later on, we'll talk about the FBX files. But over here, we have the Unity folder. And here is the, that zip file that I've just downloaded, which is the toolkit. So I'll start off by unzipping it into its own folder. And there it is. And I can now just delete the zip file. Um, so this toolkit was created with an older version of Unity, version 5.3. But as I mentioned earlier, we're running Unity 5.4, the beta version. So, and that's not a problem. But what you'll find is when you start Unity um, and open this project, it will say, OK, you're using an older version. Do you want me to update? So we will, I'll just go ahead and, and update that to the latest version of Unity. So here we are in our Unity start dialog box. And there's the folder, which is basically this one here. So I'll just start that in Unity. And it tells us that um, this project was created with an older version of Unity. So we'll just update it to the latest version of Unity. And that'll take a few moments, um, probably 20 seconds or so. And here we are in Unity. Um, the user interface is somewhat straightforward. I, I really won't, I won't go into it at this point. Um, but basically, you can see here in the assets folder is the uh, toolkit that we'll be using in our project. Um, and so the idea is that we'll transfer this toolkit from this project to our own project later on. Um, now, down here, you may have noticed some error messages in red. Uh, it's really not a problem. It, this toolkit relies on Valve's SteamVR toolkit, uh, the SteamVR plugin. And because that plugin hasn't been installed into this project the way that it's delivered, um, this throws up a few error messages. Now, if you'd like, we, we can come up here to Window and go to Asset Store, which loads the Asset Store in this tab. And then I can install the SteamVR plugin so that these errors don't come up. But as far as our project is concerned, it's really not a problem. So, um, but I think let, let's just install the SteamVR plugin just for the fun of it. So I'll just do a search, SteamVR. And down here, there's a whole lot of hits. And the one that we want is the SteamVR plugin by Valve. So we'll just click on that. Uh, and here it is. And you can see, you know, version information and all that sort of stuff. Um, the very first time that you try to install the plugin, this will say download. Um, but since I've already downloaded it in the past, it now says import for me. Um, so I'll just press the import button. And 
it lists all of the scripts that it would like to install and we want to, we want them all so we just press import and that'll just take a few seconds and then we'll be presented with a dialog box asking us to set a few default settings and here's the dialog box and there's really only two often you, you get about five or six or seven settings but at the moment I've just got these two and we just accept all and it tells us we've made the right choice and we're now done and the red error messages have gone away now we might get some other messages down here because I don't have my HTC Vive plugged into this particular computer um, but but other than that everything is fine ready to go so we can just close this down now and then later on when we uh, are working on our own project we will start this project up and just drag this uh, series of scripts onto our own project um, so that's it we can close that down and that's it for the first video uh, the second video I will talk about I guess some of these next steps uh, so I'll talk about the importance of surface normal direction of your geometry um, talk about creating a collision mesh for your project and I might even get to talking about exporting our FBX files so I'll see you then bye